Let's take a look at the project browser. Similar to the previous video on the properties palette, the project browser can be repositioned within the Revit user interface. So if you want to see more on how to specifically control that, take a look at the properties palette video. If the project browser is accidentally closed by clicking this X, you can make it show up again by going to the View tab, the User Interface drop-down, and then clicking on Project Browser. Now it comes back. So the project browser is kind of like Grand Central Station in that it controls access to all of your views, schedules, sheets, and content in the Revit project. If we minimize all the highest level items here in this tree list, we'll see the primary categories that we have access to. So the views section is all the horizontal and vertical slices and any 3D views of your 3D model. Within this category, we also have 2D drafting views that aren't actually related to the 3D model. We also have legends, which are a 2D view like unto a legend on a map. You can create some graphics in a legend view. And one thing that's unique about legends is that they can be placed on multiple sheets. Because Revit's controlling all the cross-references and drawing numbering, the views can only be placed on one sheet. So a single floor plan view can only be placed on one sheet within a Revit project. Schedules are live tabular views of information within the Revit model. So a door schedule, for example, only has rows in it if there are doors in the model. You cannot add a dummy row to a schedule. Likewise, if you delete a row from the schedule, it will actually delete the door from the 3D model. We have sheets. So these are the actual sheets that drawings are placed on, or views in this case. And then the sheets are printed, and that's what the contractor builds from, and the city official looks at for code compliance. Families is what Revit calls content. So Revit families, a door family, a window family, that's what is, is contained within the families category. And then families can be selected and grouped. So a table and six chairs can be selected and grouped, and then that group can be copied around. Revit links, if we have a structural model from a structural consultant, or an MEP model, or a kitchen model from a food service consultant, any models, any Revit models that are linked in will show up here. If we expand the view section, you can see I'm in a rather complicated example, but we can see how the Revit is able to categorize views based on what phase they represent in the model. When we select the highest level views section, we actually have this opportunity to jump over to the properties palette and toggle how the project browser is sorted. So views not on sheet can be helpful if we want to make sure all of our details and floor plans were actually placed on sheets and would not be missing from a set. Right now we're on phase and discipline. This project has phasing. If I go to all, we'll see that the organization changed. We're no longer seeing phasing. Now we're just seeing Revit view types, such as floor plan views, ceiling plan views, elevations, exterior and interior, and the 2D drafting views that I mentioned. So that's a little bit about the organization. If we double click on any of these views, it will actually open and we can see the contents of it. Anything we change here is actually changing the 3D model and can affect all other views and schedules and views placed on sheets.